so so far we have one record in our database which is very nice but the problem is we if we try to add another record with exactly the same email we are going to be able to add the second record as well which will not be good because we can't have two people with exactly the same email so we must put in a mechanism to check if that email is already taken or not so to do that let's go back to our login page and click on the sign up page here so that we can test when we are done and then i'm going to go back to my uh to my text editor here and let's go to our user.class.php okay so this is where our sign up is so in the same way we are checking for for example if email if these two emails are the same and these other things here we can also do a check before we come to here to make sure that there's no email that is exactly like this one so let's grab the email for a second here uh, where is the email so the email has been saved to data email good so all we need to do is create an sql here to do our bidding and so since we're going to need the database so instead of instantiating the db there let's move the db instance to the top so i'm going to cut this out and i'm going to put it right over there that way it's available everywhere down here okay so at this point let me copy that email thingy again copy that so what i will do is run a query first of all so we're going to say check if email already exists all right so what we will do is run a query so in a in the interest of making it different to this one i'm going to call this one sql is equal to and let's run a query a very simple query we're going to say select all sorry there star from users where so select all from users where email is equal to and then we add our email there but since we're using uh, prepared statements we're going to put a full colon like that and say email and we'll say limit one we just need to have one record as long as we find one then there's a problem so we have to tell the user so at this point the next step is to read like so i'm going to read from the query so instead of write we're going to have read like that and get a result so we're just going to name this one check like that because we are checking and now instead of adding this data here what i will do is I, I will need to create a new array but we can create the array right inside here by doing that so if i do this this is an empty array but instead of having an empty array i could i could say email like that move it a step further put the equal sign and that there and then put a value so this i'm going to put oops that's the value right there email so maybe it will make our lives easier if i just create a new array so that way i can put it outside here so i will just do this and say email is equal to email like that okay so there's one parameter here which is that one and so we're just going to supply that array here okay i think uh, we are good to go so here mm -hmm. now instead of query here of course it's uh, sql good so now we just check if check sorry about that we have to check if it's an array just to be sure if it's an array then we have a problem here so 
it means somebody already is using this so let's write our error there copy that error put it here and we are going to say something like that email is already in use tough luck okay that email is already in use goody so you could do the same thing for um let's come back here you could do the same thing for the url address right now one thing to keep in mind is that the url address is 60 characters long so that's very very long and then on top of that these are random characters right but on top of that these characters can be uh, any length between 4 and 60 that's quite a huge number and because there are 61 characters in here the possibility of two of these being exactly the same is close to zero but close to zero is not zero so we might want to change that but I can tell you now the possibility of these two numbers having two of these that are exactly the same is really really low it's like being struck by lightning so but if you want to be cautious why not so let's do a check for uh, url address okay so now if you've noticed we are creating the url address right here so we want to move that out of there and create it here so that we can check for it so we have created it there pretty good and now let's do a check so this will be exactly like this if you haven't guessed here oh, i moved it by mistake so let's copy exactly what's here and put it down there so select all from users where so let me change the email to url address of course like so and then um at this point i will change this one as well url address like that goodie and then let's check and read exactly like that now remember one thing that uh, this array we've used it at the top here so which means it still contains this email there so it's always a good idea to reset these arrays before using them in here so we're going to do exactly that i will say array is equal to false so i can set it to false so i can set it to an empty array that's all good but uh, i'll just set it to false so that when i add something here that's the only item in this array at this point okay so good for that as well so so far where you URL address is equal to that now the thing is if we do find a URL address that it, that's exactly like this one we don't need to tell the user because the user from their perspective they don't know what a URL address is because that's an internal matter as far as they're concerned they've just entered this data here so we don't need to tell them anything so all we need to do is uh, do another round of this okay just redo it again and hope that this time it doesn't uh, give you a value that already exists now there's a very very low chance that it's going to you're going to find uh, the same thing twice this is almost impossible but what you could do if you really really want to you can put a while loop that loops until you don't find the result and then it exits but that's overkill for this kind of project you are definitely sure that you will not find this if you are the kind that is paranoid and thinks uh, maybe this is it's possible two of these can be the same you can increase this to a hundred if you want to that's entirely up to you okay right so moving on uh, we come to here i think at this point we are confident that uh, we are not going to repeat ourselves so let's give it a shot now if you remember we are sending these uh, error messages but we have no way of showing the user what we are actually uh, what's really happening here so this error here doesn't really mean much uh, 
this era. So to make it meaningful, because uh, there's no way at this point we can uh, we can show this error to the user. So if the user doesn't go through this, meaning they haven't been redirected, so this gives us a chance to 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 show them an error message. So I think what we could do is let's just put this inside a session. So what I will do here is at the bottom here, I'm just going to say uh, session error. Something like this is equal to, and then I will say this error, something like so. So whatever the error contains, let's um, assign it to session error. So I'm going to copy that. So the thing is, the reason I'm putting it here is because only when we get to this point do we know that we definitely have an error because otherwise we would have gone through here. Okay, so if we get here, definite error. So what we do now, let's go to our functions. So I'm going to go to the core functions and let's create uh, one nifty function here. So let me just say function, uh, check error, something like this check you could say check message like this right because we, we will need this for different kinds of messages so check message and then i will say um let me put this down like so so what we are looking for is the session so we're going to say if is set so let's check if it's set first that and let's do an and and that same thing is not empty so if it's set and it's not empty then let's display it so I'm just going to say echo the error and then immediately we echo the error we unset it so that we don't have to loop through repeat this because otherwise every time we refresh the page we're going to see this error so we unset it immediately after displaying it. Okay, so that's about it. Check message. Now, if we want to be very, very uh, future thinking, we can also add um, an error type. Okay, so we can say error. Uh, okay, so this is an error and I think we can just put two variables, one session error, one session info. So that's fine. I think this will work just fine. Okay, so error. Okay, that looks fine. Okay, good. So let's now go to our, let me actually copy this right there. Copy. And let's go to our login inside views eShop, login.php actually sign up.php there we go so right at the top here uh, this is up to you where you want to show this message maybe let's put it inside the container so right in the row right there i'm just going to put my php tags php and then put my check message right there Oops, there we go. I think to be very specific, let's just say check error. Change it to check error. Okay, that's more meaningful. Goody. So let's see, let's give it a spin. All right, so let's uh, try a new sign up of exactly what we did last time. So, password, password, shine up. Pretty good. Okay, so now undefined index error on line 73 in the sign up class. So let's go back to line 73 in the sign up class. We are here. Okay, now the reason it's giving me this is because I've put this double equal sign, which means I'm equating it to something. I want to assign it, so I just need to put a single one. Okay, so very good. So let me re 
load that and resend. So as you can see here, there is that email already is already in use. So now at this point, you can add some, um, where is this? Uh, you can add some HTML here if you want to. So let's make a, well, let's put this inside a span, shall we? So span opener, span close. Let me put this here. This way we can style it and just put some styles and say font size, Let's say uh, 16 pixels color. This is an error, so let's make it red. I think that, that ought to do it. So let's refresh again and try again. Okay, so that email is already in use. So why isn't, uh, let's give it more power. Font size 24 pixels. Let's try that again okay great so that way the user is not going to miss that so it's up to you how you want to style this so that email is already in use pretty good so let's try a different error for example let's try uh, one there and just try to sign up and you see multiple now please enter a valid name password must be at least for that email is already in use so you see all the errors that are coming up here. Maybe they are a little too big. So I'll put it at 18 pixels. That should cover it. Let's give it one last try. Okay, there we go. So that's much better. So we've fixed that issue. So we are not going to sign up twice here, which is uh, good. If you refresh, you see that there's still one record. Okay, goody. So in our next video, we're going to see how to log in now that we know how to sign up.